the latest developments in the US-China trade confrontation um, show a continuation of tit-for-tat measures. The US has uh, um, imposed restrictions on China's second largest telecoms company in connection with alleged violations of, of sanctions on Iran and North Korea, uh, while China has um, imposed uh, an anti-dumping charge um, on US sorghum uh, exports following a two-month investigation under WTO rules um, a, a to do with uh, allegations of unfair subsidies. So neither of these measures are connected with the, uh, the threatened $50 billion worth of, uh, of US tariffs or uh, China's similar scale um, retaliatory proposal, but they are nonetheless warning shots in what is not yet a full-on trade war. So the trade confrontation is proceeding on, on three fronts. There's the US case at the WTO against Chinese discriminatory practices. Uh, there are tighter investment restrictions um, and there are tariffs. So the WTO case has a, a real chance of uh, achieving a, a meaningful improvement in uh, the international um, trading framework and all within uh, the, the existing order, but that will only happen if the US can keep Europe and Japan on board. Um, investment restrictions have already been tightened. Uh, CFIUS, the US committee that uh, oversees um, foreign investment in the US, has stepped up its activity over the past year, uh, increasingly taking on more cases and, uh, and more interventions. So US financial markets uh, are set to become even more hostile. On tariffs, um, there is a risk here that unilateral action by the US uh, could, um, in the worst case, which we do not expect, but, but could undermine the international trading order and bring about a, a broad-based uh, risk off. Even if there is no full-on trade war, uh, there is still a risk to investors. Um, investors should keep an eye on any impact on manufacturing supply chains. Um, in Asia in particular, the high-tech economies, South, South Korea, Thailand, Malaysia, um, these are countries where supply chains are the longest and, and could be most at risk of collateral damage. At the same time, countries like Brazil that compete head-to-head -head, uh, with the US in agricultural exports, uh, they could be beneficiaries of um, China's retaliation against, against the US. We do not expect a full-on trade war, but um, the US approach will probably follow the similar template has been set by, by NAFTA and by the steel and aluminium tariffs, and that is that the US will float a worst case scenario um, in order to try to soften up the opponent before stepping back to a more reasonable negotiating position. And this kind of strategy can easily backfire. Now, despite all the rhetoric about reciprocity and trade deficit, um, the, the USTR Section 301 investigation reveals that the US is really concerned about intellectual property and technology transfer. Um, but on that front, they're really playing a losing game. I mean, China is a, uh, a state-directed economy, and unlike South Korea and Japan in earlier decades, um, China is, is backed by a, a huge domestic market. So China may offer compromises on trade um, and, and on technology transfer, but it will not compromise on its Made in China 2025 program, which aims to rebalance the economy um, towards uh, uh, high-tech manufacturing. In reaching a solution, um, domestic headlines are important to the US administration. Um, and as we saw with the uh, trade deal reached recently with South Korea, Trump will seek out a solution that can be claimed as a victory. So while tougher restrictions on Chinese investment um, in the US will probably help to stem the flow of uh, intellectual property, but preventing China's um, technological advancement is not a realistic objective. Uh, so that really just leaves the, uh, the reduction of the trade deficit as a, a target that uh, the US could aim for. And uh, on that front, there is um, evidence that the US is prepared to compromise, as, as we saw in, in NAFTA, for example, where they've dropped earlier demands on rules of origin. And, and China, for its part, has uh, um, offered to, to buy more semiconductors from the US. And that's just one of many things that could be done to reduce the, uh, the bilateral trade deficit with China. Uh, in the meantime, however, the US really lacks a coherent strategy um, and its chaotic negotiating style uh, will keep markets on edge.